race day dawned on the 72nd running of the Mobile One 12 Hours of Sebring, where a masterful lap from Pipo Tirani had put the number 31 Whelan Cadillac on pole just a tenth of a second ahead of the sister 01 car. It's going to be hot, so it'll be interesting, especially uh, the first few stints with a lot of dag and uh, double stinting, but I don't know. We just need, need a nice smooth race, that's all we need. Glad that we're starting on pole. It means basically nothing for a 12-hour race. It's always good to be out there, so um, yeah, looking forward for the race. 12 hours on the clock for two Cadillacs, leading the 58 car field to green. People to Rani in the 31, the red car jumping away from Borde as they go into turn one. The 72nd running of the Mobile One 12 hours of Sebring is underway. The Cadillacs extended their qualifying battle deep into the race and the two V-Series Rs were leaving it all out on the track. It was a great battle between the two Cadillacs and that's what I like about this brand. They, um, they really let, let us race, just, just don't touch each other. And it was a small touch, but uh, hey, seemed to be all right, so all good. Behind the two Cadillacs, battling furiously at the front, Felipe Nasa was showing great early pace in the number seven Porsche, moving from fifth on the grid up into the podium positions. In GTD Pro, meanwhile, Corvette Racing were recovering from technical penalties that put both cars to the back of the grid. Class champions Vassa Sullivan Lexus also faced early setbacks. In the 14 car, we had a little bit of a bobble in the pits there where race control called that we had made contact with a, with a crew member, which is true. We did make contact with a crew member, but it was a love tap, in my opinion. So we had a drive through there that sent us to the back. We fought our way all the way back up to the front. Now we're running P2. It was nice to actually have Tommy ahead of me. Um, and I was playing rear gunner a little bit, and I was able just to be smart and just hang back and, and just be close enough to benefit when Tommy made a move on the cars ahead of him and then followed him through as and when I could. Cadillac's overall lead ended in a frightening crash with four and a half hours to go when the defending champion car went hurtling into the tyre barriers. Durrani has clipped the AF course of Ferrari and from then on he's a passenger. There'll be no fifth Sebring win for people. He's out of the car, he's OK. The sun set and in Sebring's golden hour, Cadillac's 01 car took over the fight for victory, battling Porsche, BMW and Wayne Taylor Racing's Acura. The 12-hour classic came down to sprint finishes across the classes. Jack Hawksworth's move around Daniel Serra's Ferrari set up a grandstand finish in GTD Pro. Excitement's one word to describe how I'm feeling with a few moments left of the Sebring uh, 12 hours, but nervous is probably a lot better. Our Lexus RCF GT3 by Vassar Sullivan is flying. I'm not too worried about the situation. Jack's in the car now and we're racing, we're having a good day. So just fingers crossed uh, for the last hour and five minutes now. Behind the Lexus, Corvette's chances of class success would end prematurely, but for overall victory, Cadillac and Acura carried the fight to the finish. Stout defence from Bourdais, but it's not enough. Delatrez down the inside to turn seven, takes the lead for a moment. Can he hold on? Still side by side. Here's Bourdais, they touch again. What a battle! Delatrez has done enough. It will be Acura and Wayne Taylor racing with Andretti, who win at Sebring. Bourdais and Cadillac Racing came home in second, with Porsche Penske maintaining their points lead with third. In GTD Pro, it was the first win of the season for the defending champions. It was such an amazing effort. Um, ben, Kyle, the whole team, Pit Road on the track. We just did everything you needed to do to win this endurance race. We absolutely executed, and uh, I couldn't be prouder.